dear colleagues welcome to the professional development program on national education policy as you are very much aware this is the ninth batch of this professional development pro development program which we are part of uh, 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 part of the program and i am dr ali asgar assistant professor in distance education at staff training and research institute of distance education and so far we have uh, three live interaction with all of you through swayam parva and today we are going to have a fourth live interaction uh, with all of you so far we have discussed about national education policy national credit framework a national education policy vocational education national education policy 2020 and continuing in medical education and today we are going to have a discussion and presentation on the topic of national education education policy 2020 uh, and online learning and higher education and to present on this topic we have with us very distinguished personality from indira gandhi national open university uh, let me introduce him first uh, the resource person uh, with us today is professor subodh kesharwani he is a professor in the discipline of commerce at school of management studies indira gandhi national open university and uh, he has about 22 years of teaching experience in the information system technology enabled learning and its linkages with various domains of management uh, let me also inform you that dr kesharwani has done his doctorate in erp system uh, in 2002 from the elahabad central university and he has been delivering various talks on various relevant and very uh, i mean contemporary topics like moocs team building e-commerce technology enabled learning e resources technology used in research blockchain and enterprise information system and many more and more importantly he is also founder editor of a peer reviewed journal referee journal which is having a international uh, kind of level that is the journal is called global journal of enterprise information system and he has been Uh, chief editor of that, that journal since 2009 and dr kesarwani has uh, to his credit about 35 research papers in various peer reviewed national and international journal so with this uh, words i welcome professor kesarwani to this uh, session and before handing over session to him let me also, also uh, share with all with you all that we are we have divided this session into two part in the first part professor kesharwani will be presenting on the theme which is technology uh, <coughs> online learning and higher education and in the second part of the uh, today's discussion we shall be taking your questions or inquiries which you are posting through swayam parva channel and through youtube channel so we shall come back within few seconds uh, please we are with us thank you hello learners i i think we have a very brief round of introduction by professor ali and uh, he had thrown a glimpse about what exactly you know the online learning is what exactly you know the uh, this uh, uh, the, the sessions which we have taken about nep 2020 and you know lot of you know the things which revolves around national education policy i think that was discussed by and large by the various experts in the in the in the preceding sessions starting from you know the 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 preamble session by honorable vice chancellor professor nageshwar rao then you know the variety of sessions was was talking more about what exactly you know the national education policy is and how this national education policy is changing with the change of time that is more important so this is something which had given birth to you know the various topics i think talking about you know the credits we have seen that how this academic bank of credit is 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 working as a as a as a milestone and on the other hand you know the certain amendments certain you know the new things the certain technologies which are coming up in a big way i think that is going to play a very important role because when you talk about technology i think in our preceding sessions 
I have talked about you know the teacher learning and you know the other sessions also. But here I am going to talk more on you know what exactly you know the online learning is and and how this online learning is aligned with the higher education. That is more important because since we are talking about you know the tertiary education, we are talking about you know the the university going you know the students. and so that is more important because higher education is something which is on the uh, on on the on a different mode because because uh, the kids are are if you talk about school education i think there if you introduce technology they are they are ready to take the technology but when you talk about you know the higher education somewhere you know there are certain rigidness which need to be changed with the change of time so this particular session which i am going to talk today i think it's emphasize more on what exactly you know the electronic learning is and what is you know the present trend is going on in higher education and how we are going to intermingle you know the online learning and higher education with this certain terms because the digital divide is coming up and edtech are coming up because when you talk about educational technologies i think somewhere you know the change is coming up so technology is no more learning is no more you know the only the technology thing but it is somewhat over and above to that where you have you know the hybrid way of taking the thing so hybrid learning is coming up which is a complete combination of you know the brick and mortar system the click and mortar system and you know the trend which is changing with the change of time because the the trend is changing very fast there was a time when technology was just you know a very important thing uh, but if you if you talk in the present scenario i think the uh, yesterday technology is no more part of the present technology so this is what you know the change is and uh, we have seen that how the indira gandhi national open university which was pioneer in in uh, distance learning open and distance learning i think have changed themselves and revamped with this with this new platform called electronic learning online learning so we started with you know the pilot project with two programs and now we have bundles of programs uh, in the in the masters in the bachelors and you know the various other domains so this had given birth to you know this this thing what exactly we are talking about so prior to going into the depth of this particular Uh, theme which i have taken today i think we have to talk about certain statistics certain facts because because there was a trend which was changed so we have seen that how the blackboards and textbook which has uh, which was you know a need of an hour in the past but now it's no more uh, no playing a very important role and the gadgets had come up which had taken the replica of what is exactly you know the text which are available into our uh, basket and uh, with the help of that you know things are changing so technology used in education sector we have seen that it is you know crossing into three times so so if you talk about you know the countries who are using the edtech i think uh, uh, us stand number 1 then you have india then you have brazil united kingdom and china these are the countries which are coming up so 89% of educators realize that technology is an integral part of their life and so must be integrated into the educational business so i think technology is something which is playing a very important role because because we have seen that the technology was started by by the defense by the by the different purpose but after certain time you realize that this is becoming a integral part of the learning so so the drones and other you know the artificial intelligence which was used by by that by the technocrats for different purpose but now it is crossing its wear boots and applying in the online learning or in the higher education so we are going to talk about you know the certain facts and figures then we are going to talk about how the digital divide is coming up because when you talk about the digital divide i think somewhere you know there is a the the learners are are privileged to uh, access the internet but somewhere it is not so this is somewhat you know uh, the gap which is coming up and this had talk about you know something which which is called you know the uh, thing which need to be done so uh, if you talk about the reports i think 50.8% of teachers said they know what exactly edtech is and 35.6% have heard about and not sure about the terminology and 13.6 are still aware about what exactly edtech is so edtech is nothing but a educational technology which is which is going to be used for the for the for the primary education for the secondary education and when you talk about higher education i think the tertiary education there also there is a great role of that so so people are slowly and gradually becoming familiar with edtech and you and within a short span you will find out that it is going to be part and parcel of 
of our education system. So this is something which is there and technology is something which is changing. I want to share a very good example over here because when we go into the market because in, in, and, and, uh, buy a pizza. So, so, so if you, if you, if you take a pizza, I think you get in a square box. And when you open, it's a circle. And when you start eating, it's a triangle. So this is something which is, which is giving a change in the technology. So technology is no more, uh, a proprietary of anybody. It is, it is, it is very fastly changing. And, and what we observe that, you know, the, there are certain, you know, the system which was, which was there, the brick and mortar system, the established universities were there. But now what we have seen that people have crossed the boundaries, the traditional universities boundaries had been, had been changed now. So there was a time if you, if you see that, you know, the education was completely confined to, you know, the university systems. But right now the education systems had changed with the change of this, this uh, online platforms. Either you talk about edX or Coursera or if you confine to India, I think we have seen that how this Swayam and Swayam Prabha is, is playing a very important role. So, so the, the good number of courses are coming up, the standalone courses are coming up and the learners are enrolling in the standalone courses through Swayam, which is a, you know, uh, uh, initiative by Ministry of Education. And then in that particular um, uh, courses, they enroll, they, they get the credit and then finally, you know, they put the credit in the academic bank. So these are the good things which are coming up where you have seen that how this academic bank of credit is playing a very important role. So traditional universities education is, is bundled with, you know, the, the technological platforms, either you talk about, you know, if you talk about the clouds, I think somewhere, you know, the AWS is there, the web services are there. If you talk about Facebook, the social networking platforms are there. Then on the other hand, you know, the certain research oriented, you know, the platforms are there like academic EDU, like ResearchGate. And on the other hand, certain, you know, the correlation one and these are, you know, linked with, uh, with, with certain things. And then finally, you know, the, the dissemination of the learning is going on. So this is what exactly, you know, the scene is, what exactly the scenario is that we talk about today. If we talk about that, uh, that online learning and higher education is intermingling and giving a, a good way to the learners. So education is no longer delivered by educational institution alone. We have seen that and companies are, are, you know, using this real life uh, things or real time things, which, which is playing a very important role. So there are certain facts and figures, which is very important that education is the third biggest spending item among essential national spendings. If we see that how this OTT or, uh, uh, or the, you know, the uh, web services or web series are there like Netflix and Spotify is there, which is, you know, uh, having a, uh, bank of the, the songs. So you see how the market is, you know, coming up and, and once you, once you reach to the top level, you find out that, that this is the place where, you know, the education sector is there. So this is the third sector, you know, after uh, uh, real estates and, you know, the other thing. And in, if you go more into the depth of that, you find out that role of this higher education is very important. So this is what exactly, you know, the thing is that, uh, that, that the government is also taking more initiative in this direction. And when you're going to transform education, that is, you know, from, uh, if you talk about, you know, the learning stage, or rather we say that lifelong learning stage. So we see that, you know, the preschools are there, then primary and secondary educations are there, then higher education and adult learning are there. And there you will find out, you know, the, the, the classroom texts are there. Like if you talk about, you know, the indigenous players in India, I think Baijus are, are there, then uh, tutors are there and a lot of, you know, the initiatives, uh, the, the SOEM initiatives, which the, which the government is taking, which is a very, uh, uh, very subsidized thing, which, which the government had taken up. So SOEM uh, is, is there. We will definitely talk about that, how the massive open online courseware, which we usually call MOOC was started by, by, by the, by the certain groups in US. And then it's become, uh, uh, a hot cake if you talk about present scenario. So 
the players like edX like Coursera like simple learn then Khan Academy and then other you know the platforms which are going on in India then how they have transformed educations with the help of you know the 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 platform which is there so and on the other hand peer-to-peer -peer knowledge sharing is also coming up we have seen that there are certain you know the static thing which like Quora is there and so these are the you know the attacks which are which are playing a very important role so I think uh, if we talk about today discussion i think this three tier approach and the discussion point revolves around you know the ndp 2020 and uh, uh, the preceding speakers have very well you know talk about what exactly the national education policy is and how this national education policy is is revamping themselves with the change of time because the online learning or electronic learning or you know the online education is uh, is, change, is is also deviating from its current path and then higher education is also changing because because more skill oriented courses are 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 you know coming uh, a part of of this of the baskets and then uh, there are certain you know the things which are going on so anyway i think we will definitely talk about on the lines of online learning and higher education vis-a-vis -vis nep 2020 but on the other hand we will talk about digital divide and edtechs because when you talk about you know uh, the edtechs or when you talk about digital divide i think somewhere we have to find out the gaps because when you talk about technology, when you talk about uh, online education, or the rather we would say the electronic learning, I think somewhere we have to talk about totality because totality is something which, which believes in integration. So when you are going to integrate from underneath to pinnacle, when you are going to integrate, you know, the the certain nodes, certain verticals, I think somewhere, you know, the benefit is going to be there for the for the larger segment of the society. So one of the biggest advantage of electronic learning is is that it transcends the ge geographical boundaries, it crosses the boundaries and put it where boots in other parts of the world. I think we have seen that how the MIT courseware, which was uh, initiated by MIT and you know the different players which were established in in brick and mortar learning i think they have they have revamped their contents uh, indira gandhi national open university is one of that because the university have uh, uh, a huge you know archives of self learning materials and uh, that too in in varieties of domains in varieties of departments so that you know the the archives are you know transferred into um, e gyan course which is a uh, electronic portal where we can put the archive and consider it as one of the quadrants of 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 this uh, the online learning so again you know when you talk about the quadrants i think the four the whole structure of learning when you talk about massive open online course where swayam or swayam prabha is going to be bifurcated into four quadrants and the first quadrant talks about you know the the video part i think the animation the multimedia which we use in the content so that the learners can very easily mug up the thing so this is the usp of the the quadrants and the second quadrants is no doubt you know the self learning material and indira gandhi national open university considered to be the only university in the india which emphasize more on you know the the self learning content the contents which are automatically you know revamped uh, in in its own style on its own way so this is something which is which had given birth to this kind of thing then assessment and then finally you know the examination so so again all those things when we talk about electronic learning when we talk about online learning i think somewhere we follow a electronic approach there's no you know the uh, uh, physical touch as far as you know the uh, the learning is concerned as far as you know the evaluation is concerned as far as assessment is concerned as far as examination is concerned so this is the beauty of electronic learning and the, and uh, keeping in mind you know higher education is also going to be revamped in that way so it allows the benefit of class irrespective of the physical locations and student can very easily you know attend the courses in the from the various prestigious universities across the globe so this is the thing which is coming up and i was talking about you know the multidiscipline approach i would i'm talking about the multilinguistic approach and then you know the 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 learning which is there so this is uh, something which which is which is coming up and when you talk about edtech i think edtech tools are online platforms that assimilate technology with education so 
so education is there the technology is there now i think the tailor made the customized you know the contents are going to be created which can be quite useful i think uh, it's more emphasizing for um, uh, for the for the brick and mortar learners for the click and mortar systems and these edtech tools and shows that online education delivery is carried out flawlessly so i think somewhere you know the interruption is going to be cut short and whatever the digital disruption is there whatever the digital you know the divide is there that need to be uh, taken care of because when you talk about india as a whole i think somewhere you, there is a good uh, broadband or the or the bandwidth but on the other hand you find out you know the remote areas where there is no power there is no internet so so what we observe that that we are uh, not following you know the mandate of reaching to the unreached so edtech is something which emphasizes more on this particular aspect and talks about certain things so when you talk more uh, about you know the edtech tools which are going to be used by the educators uh, in a uh, in a, in, a, in, a, in particular 2022 or in 2023 i think uh, the 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 platform is already there and some of the you know the the tools which i am talking about i think we are we are acquainted with that we are acclimatized that or it's going to be day to day activity as far as our learning is concerned i think google form we start with the google form i think what we have seen that when as a researcher when we develop a questionnaire the the good part is that that these you know the questionnaires are going to be uh, filled with the help of this google forms and uh, transfer to the res respondents and when the respondents reciprocates i think somewhere the response sheets are going to be filled by that so very easily we get the data in a in a in a excel format and then the moment we get the data we we very easily uh, customize it into you know the certain graphical format so which either it could be the pie chart or bar chart so this is a good thing which is there microsoft teams i think somewhere helps us in in interacting with the in a, in a virtual mode and you too i think we all knowing that um, since i am interacting with you i think uh, after certain time you find out that that my video is available on the on the youtube so so this is something which is there and uh, the learners can also download the varieties of you know the contents which uh, overlap with the particular theme so uh, Google Meet is also one of the virtual, you know, the platform which is going on, and then Udemy, Vimeo, OneNote is there. When we talk about OneNote, I think uh, this is a very good initiative where you have got, you know, the varieties of PDF files, and you can convert it into a one file. So OneNote can be useful. You can make it as a ready reckoner, which can be quite useful for the for the for the learning purposes. So this is something which is there. Coursera, we have we have talked about that how. uh that uh this online revolution which we talk about that uh, had come up after the after the book after the textbook that online education had come up so coursera edx and some of the platforms which are coming up i think uh, the initiatives which which going to be taken by by the by the government of india in in coming in coming months about you know the creation of the digital university so this is a part of 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 a way i think uh, the education industry is going to change or the learning industry is going to change because the technology when you talk about technology i think somewhere you have to take into consideration the current trends the current model which is going on udemy is is again you know the platforms with uh, with uh, varieties of courses so this is something what exactly you know the the scenario is and uh, when you talk about spectrum of tools that helps a teacher and student i think uh, that is more important because when you talk about technology it's not like that we can only facilitate the learners somewhere you know the the, uh, the other verticals which are helping in disseminating the educations can also be equipped with the technology so 70% of teachers if we talk about i think agree that edtech tools can be helpful for students for better learning and uh, these edtech tools are what we have talked about in our preceding slide is more uh, justified 71% principals agree that digital tools help students to build their students the their real life skills i think when you talk about or go into the depth of national education policy 2020 i think somewhere we we talk about you know the skills we talk about you know the uh, the 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 trend which is going on so 35% of teachers agree that edtech tools helps them to effectively monitor academic progress of their 
students. So this is what exactly you know the the scene is. And edtech is not just done by edtech companies. I think if you cross the the boundary, you will find out that companies launching education services. I think uh, the the Shopify campus is coming up, and InVision Design is is uh, is giving uh, approach to that. Intercom Academy is coming up. So, what you have observed that you know the companies are also launching education services, and when you when you talk about you know the passionate individual educational courses, I think somewhere it's not confined to you know the the players which are which are available here, but lot of other you know the platforms which are which are coming up. So. if you talk about edtech in 2022 i think the new and evolved model on the other hand has online curriculum which is based on the analytics and this has given birth to you know the personalization and has a progress tracking system which 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 can be used by artificial intelligence based feedback so edtech in 2022 2022 is more agile more active and the curriculum is based on cultural collaborations which can amalgamate youtube social media and gaming models so so the learning which i am talking about the the four quadrants i think we have seen that it's not you know going in the monotonous way but somewhere you know the the latest trend or the latest know how which is uh, which is a need of an hour is going to be implemented or absorbed into it so focusing more on continuous engagement is there so when you talk about you know the continuous learning so there was a time when we talk about the blended learning but if you talk in the present scenario we are more talking about you know the continuous learning so continuous learning is is more agile in nature and it can and engage the learner for a longer time and finally you know when the learners are engaged more penetration of footfall in the particular portal i think the more learning will go on in that way so so if we if we go more into the depth of that i think somewhere we find out that the digital divide is the gap between uh, the internet access and those without uh, the internet i think uh, the uh the preceding uh, slides i i have little bit emphasize on what exactly you know the digital divide is and uh, i think uh, if you talk about india as a whole you find out that you have we have got a urban belts we have got a rural belt so but somewhere we have to bridge those gap so the the contents i think which is created by by let's take example of indira gandhi national open university the self learning material which we used to develop so we try to take into consideration that the contents we develop is is uh, itself a self learning material and the learners who are situated in remote areas or in urban areas or wherever they are located they can go through the content and once they are reading the contents they feel that they are in the classrooms so this is something uh, you know the thing is there so uh, so taking into consideration i think when you talk about the digital divide i think whatever the gaps are there that need, that need to be bridged and it's uh, and digital divide is multifaceted and includes many factors such as access affordability quality and relevance i think the the national education policy mandate emphasize more on you know the affordability quality and relevance because uh, affordability is something which is a very important aspect because i think uh, that is the only thing by which you can reach to the unreach and cater the masses because the cost is a very important aspects learning is not everybody cup of tea and it's really a very cumbersome a very very expensive affair i think when you talk about the learning so indira gandhi national open university if you talk about i think always believes in reaching to the unreach and try to develop a program try to develop a courses which emphasize on the on the on the on the on the base of affordability so uh, and on the other hand there are certain additional divides like other areas that can create digital inequality which include security interconnectivity digital literacy and access to equipment i think uh, that is something which is there and uh, if you talk about you know the swayam courses i think ignu you considered as one of the national coordinators of the of the swayam courses and uh, we have got a good number of courses which are available under the ambit of indira gandhi national open university and these courses are 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 used by the varieties of learners and uh, they also get the privilege to get the credit transfers with the help of the academic bank of credit so these are the benefits which are which are coming up and if we go more into the depth of the digital divide i think uh, 
we we see that you know the the jacob nelson categorized the digital divide into three stages that is economic divide usability divide and empowerment divide so if you talk about economic divide i think uh, no doubt the as i have talked about uh, that uh, that uh, the the programs or the courses or you know the the uh, which is not everybody cup of tea so technology is is no doubt reaching to the unreached but somewhere it's not become a a fair where one can one can get it in a in a in a throw away price so i think somewhere this need to be taken care usability divide is is there that that how they are going to use it and then empowerment drive i think uh, the 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 content or the courses are 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 developed in such a manner that it can cater you know the under marginalized deprived and other things so digital divide if we if we see that i think it is something which was uh, started in the 1990 and uh, and phase at the both ends that is academic transaction either it could be the teacher or the student so it's not like that i have talked about that digital divide is something which is which can be work as a constraint for the students i think somewhere if you are not going to Take, uh, take the digital digitalization or the technology in the manner i think it is going to be a, a human crisis situation for the for the for the teachers also for the for the instructors also so economic divide as i have talked about i think uh, we have if we see this particular image we we see that how the developing economies are 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 using it and how the developed economies are using it so internet access become low among economic vulnerable countries and it refers in the past year also that this is something which is there so usability divide i have talked about the problem is particularly evident with low literacy and senior persons and somewhere you see that technology remains so complicated that many people could not use a computer even if they got one for free so i think somewhere this is more important that rather than uh, uh, providing a device i think the 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 grooming or the training need to be done where we can develop a platform that how they are going to use it so that is more important so if we talk in the present scenario i think there are certain technologies which are available in throw away price or they are freely available but the learners have to or you know the or the or the users who are going to use they have to they know how to use it because that is more important so it happens with uh, with certain thing and empowerment drive as i have talked about is a divide most difficult to solve it is concerned with how we use technology to empower ourselves and it uh, and we we can see that you know research reports that few people contribute content to the internet so but with the change of time we find that things are changing and users do not work to understand how they can truly be empowered so this is something which is there so digital divide as i have talked about you know bifurcated into usability empowerment and then economic drive which is there so so on the other hand if you talk in the new education policy uh, perspective i think uh, the digital drive is technology in education teacher education and then financial support so so uh, we have to create and exchange the ideas and use of technology to enhance learning assessment planning and administration is is one of the aspect and then teacher education is there by 2030 the minimum degree qualification for teaching will be the four year integrated be a degree if you talk about you know the school going uh, kids so and financial support if you talk about i think the private institutions will be encouraged to offer scholarship to their students so these are the certain things which are going on and when you talk about the professional education stand alone technical universities health sciences legal and agriculture universities will aim at becoming multidisciplinary institutions so Uh, this is something so uh, is going to come up where multidiscipline is going to be emphasized in big way so the the the, the, the students who have been enrolled in in uh, in science they can take up paper of uh, social science as a as a, as a minor so here i want to share a very good example that uh, if you talk about the western world i think uh, the the countries like like united states of america or united kingdom i think uh, they believes in in enrolling a student in in the beginning stage in their institutions rather than in a department so so if if i am a commerce student and uh, i i can i can go for higher education in in, U, in us i can i can enroll myself first in in the in the, in the university in the in the and uh, i will study i will start learning you know the 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 papers which are 
uh, which are minor in nature so so my first year my second year is quite common in nature where i am going to enroll in the in the university and i am going to study the common papers with the science st stream student or you know the art students are going on and when i am moving to the third year i can start taking the majors or the the subjects like you know the commerce or you know the hardcore papers like business studies or you know accountancy or statistics so this can decide my 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 specialization domain specialize decide my my streams and finally when i move into the fourth year i can the the papers which i choose can decide my department so this is a good thing which you know the institutions are doing right now that rather than enrolling the student in the in the in the particular stream they enroll the students in the university in the in the and the, the blankets and the the mood of courses are there so they have got certain courses which and accordingly they can decide so they start you know having with the mind that they can enroll in the commerce but after certain time they enroll in the multidiscipline um, courses so i think this could be the beauty of the national education policy which is going to be apply in in the indian scenario in in very soon where we see that you know the learners take the credits and uh, choose the courses uh, make the tailor made you know the curriculum as per their requirement as per their need and finally whatever the curriculum they take whatever the you know the syllabi they will choose it will decide their uh, their streams so keeping in mind i think the academic bank of credit or you know the swayam or swayam prabha we have talked about i think the stand alone swayam courses are playing a very important role learners enrolled in the swayam courses and as per their pace as per their need they they accomplish the particular course and finally once they achieve the uh, once the four component the four quadrant they they do it then automatically they get the credits by putting it in the academic bank of credit so these are the good things which is coming up and finally academic bank of credit talks about the quantity talks about you know the the quantum of the courses they take or you know the quantum of credit so if uh, say for the for the bachelor's degree i think 132 is the benchmark so if the learners get you know 100 credits from from swayam or 32 credits or you know the 50 credits from various ways uh, the moment they achieve the 132 credits they ask for the degree and uh, their their uh, combinations their minors their majors what they achieve is going to decide that what exactly they want so this is the usp of you know the national education policy which talks about you know the multidiscipline approach which talks about you know the certain things which is there so i think uh, with the change of time we will find out that the the boundaries which have been created by by the various institutions by the various states or by the various jurisdictions it need to be eradicated need to be abolished and uh, the uh, the sky is the limit for the learners they enroll in the particular uh, courses get the credit and to put it on the academic bank and then you know the things will go on so in a coming years you will find out that that uh, this credit is not confined to getting you know the the courses they can if they are working in corporates they are working in industry they are working somewhere that can be also converted into credit so this kind of you know the phenomena which is going to be developed and uh, ministry of education is working in this direction in a big way so all those things you know talks more about that whatever the learning should be there should be perpetual in nature there must there must be a concrete you know the benefit there must be a a uh, uh, certain you know the effort which, which can play a very important role if the learners are are skill oriented if the learners are skills i think uh, somewhere they can get the employment in a very faster mode so intention behind the national education policy is to emphasize more on you know the skilling so that they can learn they can earn and finally you know once they enter into the market once they once they establish themselves i think uh, they uh, they can do the wonders with their with their knowledge skills with their you know the way they have they have learned it so so this is the thing which is going on and when you talk about i think the higher education i think which is quite intricate in nature if you compare with you know the primary education or the secondary education because the tertiary education is is somewhat more uh, more intricate in nature so it is inequality among the people in terms of access of digital tools and indicates the gap between those who have regular effective access to digital and information because because uh, certain things which are going to be uh, play a very important role so 
I think uh, 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 that uh, I have talked a lot about certain things which can which can throw a light on what exactly you know the online learning is and the higher education is is how the higher education is changing. There are certain questions I think which which going to be a part of this. Uh, digital divide vis a vis when when we talk about online learning or higher education that how the digital divide affects the learning of being a student i think this is a very good question because because the digital divide is 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 a, is a gap between because the technology is something which is uh, because india is a country which have a huge base and and uh, we have to see that how the technology is is going to be fit in that bottle so so maybe you know the internet usage is uh, uh, internet bandwidth is slow or you know the broadband is not in that way so 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 we have to find out that how this digital divide affects the learning of being a student and how does digital divide promote inequality in education i think we uh, we have to see that and what are the benefits of digitalization in education we we see that education when the education is digitalized it's uh, reaching to the unreach and when you talk about you know the technology enabled learning i think it have a wider reach and uh, the learners who are uh, who are situated in a in a in one corner of of india they can with the help of digitalization with the help of you know the technology they can very easily get the uh, benefit of that and they can use it so and uh, and digital di- divide if you talk in a present scenario i think it's it's going to be a very important rather i would say it's a need of an art and without digital uh, divide i think uh, thing is not going to be changed so and uh, this is very important aspects and if you talk about key principles of nep i think the national education policy uh, we have a very elaborate discussion and we have seen that uh, it talks about curriculum pedagogy and policy equity and inclusion so this is what exactly you know the national education policy is and how the inclusion and how the equity is going to come i think somewhere there is a use of technology which is going to be important so uh community participation use of technology and uh, for for various aspects is going to come up so critical thinking creativity unique cap- capabilities are 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 very important and uh, when you talk about you know the technology enabled learning i think somewhere you get varieties of ways by which the things are going to be changed so so we have seen that online learning can improve future ready skills uh, communication collaboration technology and education we have we have talked about you know the certain ways of by which the technology is going to be uh, come up in the in the present scenario so uh, collaboration education this is there and uh, higher education vision is there i think uh, uh, there are certain bodies which are which are playing a very important role which helps in revamping curriculum pedagogy assessment and student support i think uh, we we see that the curriculum is also going to be changed right? because the learners are quite agile right now they uh, they see how much you know the state of art the curriculum is and the and the teaching pedagogy is also changing we have seen that when we follow you know the Uh, the four quadrant i think uh, the teaching pedagogy as far as animation usage of animation as far as you know the multimedia is 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 coming up and and student support is also changes with the change of time there was a time when we when we are when we are restricted to only one mode of student support but uh, with the help of uh, this technology i think uh, the social networking platforms or the whatsapp you know uh, the other ways the things are going to be changed so imaginative and flexible curriculum structures are coming up and the the option is given to the learners so so uh, i think uh, there are certain major reforms in higher education is coming up multidisciplinary part i have talked about holistic and multidisciplinary education is coming up and uh, ger is going to be enhanced by 2035 so so online education if you talk about it is going to be seen with your life and help student to become more independent learners before they make their way in the real world and that could be the purpose and uh, and uh, when you talk about uh, electronic learning i think student engagement and performance are going to be judged at every juncture at every uh, uh, at every time and wherever they are they are finding themselves you know in trouble i think the technology is going to help them in this in this regard uh, mooks i have already talked about and uh, we see that you know 
that how they, the Indira Gandhi National Open University have developed their own uh, you know the self learning uh, material in a, in a digital mode and you know the learning management system so virtual learning environment is coming up content management system i think uh, or the course management system which we usually call the learning management system i think the it's a moodle based platform which we are using and then mobile learning is coming up i think uh, mobile work as a as a smartphone we have seen that but on the other hand it's going to be helpful to the learners so so th these are the things which are which are going to play a very important role and uh, there are certain questions which are coming up how does online learning help learners uh, it's it's very true that uh, online learning is going to help learners in in a various mode in at various verticals in a various manners because because you are with the technology in a 24 into 7 mode so when you are with the technology in 24 into 7 mode you can get the privilege of the of the of the learning as per your requirement as per your need and uh, and online learning somewhat navigate the learners to you know do the things sometimes you know what the technology is doing if i am you know confined to the particular theme or the particular topic we we see that you know the the related videos are coming to us so this is what a new way of learning so online learning is uh, is, a, is a new way of model and uh, new way of learning and uh, it's having the most positive effect and uh, when you talk about uh, this thing this is there so uh, i think uh, i have talked a lot about uh, the the basic part of what exactly you know the online learning is and how this online learning is is uh, is is uh, aligned with the higher education that is more important because uh, because certain you know the things which are coming up and uh, like uh, augment and digital infrastructures are there online teaching platforms and tools are there virtual labs we have talked about and blended models of learning is coming up why i am talking about blended models of learning because there is no such rocket science or the thumb rule where you can say that the learning can go in this way 